Hey y'all, Coach Jennifer here, guys. Stay with me. Hey y'all. And in today's class, we're going to be talking about evil desire. Okay. And how to thwart evil desire and move towards righteousness. All right. All right. Um, we're going to find out that this is a very big deal in this time when we can pretty much have anything we want as far as our desires go. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can almost order it on the internet and have a Uber driver to bring it to you. Right. Yeah. Well, in this video, we're going to learn how to deal with these evil desires and how to move closer towards righteousness okay you know like our scripture like our father told us to be perfect or to thrive to be perfect mm -hmm. well in this video we're gonna take big strides as far as that goes simply by learning how to put away evil desires that's a really big deal we're gonna find out here okay this is coming out of command 12 of the shepherd of hermes right but we're only going to cover the first 12 verses okay yeah because it kind of um changes gears there and we're talking about what does it say there of a twofold desire that the commands of god are not impossible but we're not really going to get into that other part that the devil is not to be feared by them that believe yeah and we covered that in the hermes academy series so we won't get into all of the verses, but let's jump here in verse one. Okay. Again, he said unto me, remove from thee all evil desires and put on good and holy desires. For having put on a good desire, thou shalt hate that which is evil and bridle it as thou wilt. But an evil desire is dreadful and hard to be tamed. Now, to give you a little bit of background on what's going on here, we're here at the end of the commands. Mm -hmm. The book called The Shepherd of Hermes is actually broken down into three parts. We have the first part of the book, which is the vision, right. where Hermes basically has a dream. Mm -hmm. right? And then the second part of the book, he's given these commands or instructions or mandates what to do and what not to do right and then in the third part of the book he actually gets to speak with an angel mm -hmm. after he learns these commands he gets to speak with an angel face to face who gives him the breakdown of that dream that he had in vision one yes yeah, a more detailed book right the other two books so here we are at the end of the commands or the mandates the middle book Right. Where he's basically summarizing all that Hermes has been taught or that we have been taught by way of these commands. Right. And so now, in summary, he's basically saying to remove from the all evil desires. Mm -hmm. And now he's going to tell us about these evil desires and right. how to put them away. Yeah. And to take on, you know, the holy desires. Yeah. And when he's talking about evil desires, um, he's talking about our thoughts the things that we want, the things that we look forward to, um, those kind of desires. Well, like I say, he's going to he's going to summarize them here and we can look back in commands, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, even in the rest of the Torah or rest of the scripture. Right. You know. But let's go to verse two. It is very horrible and wild and by its wildness consumes men. And especially if a servant of God shall chance to fall into it, except he be very wise he is ruined by it, for it destroys those who have not the garment of a good desire and are engaged in the affairs of this present world and delivers them unto death. Talking about evil desire. Right. Evil desire is very horrible and wild. Yeah. And by its wildness consumes man. Yeah. So, in other words, it is the desire that is consuming man. Yeah, because you could, when you start having like these evil desires it's all you can think about mm. wanting to fulfill them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right and so like we said we're going to talk about you know how to stop that mm -hmm. how to prevent that because you're absolutely right if you don't stop these evil desires they're going to consume you right then it says especially if a servant of god shall chance to fall in mm. because you have to understand that the enemy is actually trying to target these people, these mm -hmm. virgins that are standing by the tower. Mm -hmm. He's trying to get them away from the tower. If he can move a, a, enough of them away from the tower, he can delay the whole process. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. So that's why it's even worse for the servant of God to fall into these evil desires. And this would be the case where he says, if he's not wise. And we know that wisdom comes not only by fearing um, the father, but 
wisdom comes by reading his word too. Absolutely. So understanding what it is that we are not supposed to do, mm-hmm. you know, because like you say, if you, you don't even know it's, it is an evil desire until you have read it in a scripture, right. thus saith the Lord, yeah. you know, you're actually thinking you're doing something right. Absolutely. Possibly. And if you don't see it, in the in the word of God, then, like you said, you don't know. Mm-hmm. You don't know you're doing wrong. Mm-hmm. Good point. So these what would seem normal desires was going to ruin us, ruin people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What does it say? For it destroys those who have not the garment of good desire and are engaged in the affairs of the present world. Now that's two different things. Mm-hmm. If this person has both of these traits they're at risk Mm -hmm. the way i'm reading and understanding this if they don't have the garment of good desire Mm -hmm. and then you know what is the garment of good desire uh when we think about garment i think we're you know we're talking about like put on the full armor of faith good works um self-control um possibly talking about the virtues right exactly what we read in ephesians chapter six yeah. Mm-hmm. So what it's saying is if you don't have on the garments of these virtues um, of these virgins, then a servant of God, um, these evil desires can actually consume you or, or, as it said, lead to your death. Yeah. So you understand predestination. Right. So you have these people who have this predestination to fulfill this work. Mm-hmm. But they haven't put on the garment of righteousness. Like you said, they haven't read the scripture yet. Mm-hmm. And so they are vulnerable because they don't have this armor on. Mm-hmm. And then you add that to the fact that they are engaged in the affairs of the present world. And ain't nothing good about that. Because it's completely leading them astray. Mm-hmm. Everything about the world mm-hmm. is opposite to our father's kingdom mm-hmm. and so you have a person who don't have his shield on out there amongst the wolves so to speak mm-hmm. and so now you have this evil desire right and that's going to swoop him away it's like you could imagine just dropping the country boy off down on the boulevard down in the middle of the night he has no he you know with a pocket full of money mm-hmm. not knowing what to do or what you know you're not probably going to not going to see him tomorrow right it says and delivers them unto death. Unto death. Right. And the thing about that is we're coming upon the time when we are expecting a lot of this death. Mm-hmm. And this is the reason why is because people don't have this understanding of the shepherd of Hermes. Right. Mm-hmm. So let's go on. Number three. Sir, said I, what are the works of an evil desire which bringeth men unto death? Show them to me that I may depart from them. Here said he, by what works an evil desire bringeth the servants of God unto death. So you got to understand a little bit of the background here is you have Hermes, Mm -hmm. who is a normal servant Mm -hmm. talking to an angel who is teaching him. Right. And explaining him these commands and these mandates. And so now Hermes is able to ask him questions and say, hey. Mm-hmm. What about this and what about that? Mm-hmm. This is one of the only books, if not the only books in all of scripture where we actually see this interaction between a human and an angel like this. Mm-hmm. Or this dialogue. Right. And so this being the angel of repentance, he says, I'll tell you. So let's hear what he has to say in verse four. First of all, it is an evil desire to covet another man's wife or for a woman to covet another's husband as also to desire the dainties of riches and multitude of superfluous meats and drunkenness and many delights. So here is a list of the evil desires. Yeah. I wouldn't say this is a complete list. He's going to go on there in verse five. Mm -hmm. I think one of the great things about this is that each one of these desires that he has listed as evil, um, the father talks about them in his word and he gives us and a solution to each one of them. The riches, the um, superfluous meats, drunkenness, and as well as other desires and delights that we have. Right. And one thing that I notice about these is that they all seem to be associated with the spirit of inequity. Mm, okay. 
this angel of iniquity we read about back there in command six right where it's talking about how each person has these two angels mm -hmm. it's just like the cartoons where you have the good angel and the bad angel standing on your shoulder trying to coax you into fulfilling their will right well first of all you have the angel of righteousness who is mild and modest mm -hmm. gentle and quiet and we'll talk more in this video about how to take on this so-called angel of righteousness mm -hmm. But look down here in verse 11 where it starts talking about the angel of inequity. Right. How he is bitter and angry and foolish. Right. One thing it also says is, When therefore these things come into thine heart, have a desire for them. Thou shalt know by his work that this is the angel of inequity. So when you start to have the desire for these things, um, you might be fooling around with the angel of iniquity yeah and you see them down there in verse 13 where it's talking about the best meats drunkenness the love of what belongs to others covetousness pride and much speaking so this is definitely talking about someone who is taking on the angel of iniquity right so this angel of iniquity is associated with these evil desires mm -hmm. so we're talking about spiritual warfare here mm -hmm. so we're gonna have to put this in the rod of iron series you know which is about spiritual warfare mm -hmm. this one here will just be filed under the angel of iniquity so let's hear more about him number five for in much delicacy there is folly and many pleasures are needless to the servants of God such lusting Therefore is evil and pernicious, which brings to death the servants of God. For all such lusting is from the devil. All right. So we really need to study this angel of inequity and, you know, what his traits are, because they all seem to be tied all into this, mm -hmm. you know, and it's a lot to do with pleasure. Right. You know, when she says it's needless to the servants of God. Right. And it also want to bring to mind, Coach, where it says many and much. It's not telling us that we are to have no pleasures, right? But it definitely says much and many. And this book goes on to explain pleasures, mm -hmm. which ones are good and which ones are bad. Some pleasures are good. Right. You know, some, you know, there are a lot of people who take pleasure in doing stuff for other people, mm -hmm. you know. And so you're right. There's We just have to understand which ones are the evil pleasures and he's breaking them down for us so i'm sure he doesn't plan for this to be an exhaustive list we see back here in verse four but i think we, it summarizes it drunkenness um multitude of superfluous meats that's definitely the angel of iniquity mm -hmm. that's what it says when you start wanting strange foods and right. I, and i understand it that firsthand accounts you know of dealing with this you you just want stuff that you don't have Right. I can recall one time when we, you know, we were hunters here and we were eating a lot of venison. And I was like, which I'm always thankful for. And I was like, I'm tired of eating the same food. Yeah. And, you know, it immediately bounced into my head. I guess the Shepherd of Hermas where it says when you start desiring um superfluous meats or you want other things like you said that you don't have then you might be dealing with the angel of iniquity absolutely dealing mm -hmm. with the angel of iniquity mm -hmm. and you think where we're at as society where they've brought us now is we don't recognize the fact that we want these superfluous meats Mm -hmm. I mean, everything is a superfluous meat. You know, right. you go out there and you, you know, you walk, you riding down the, the avenue, in the street, and you have, you know, twenty seven different restaurants to choose from. Mm -hmm. Well, each one of them is all superfluous meats. Mm -hmm. You know, because what you got at home, ramen noodles. You know, that, mm -hmm. that, that's what we're used to. Mm -hmm. But now, all of a sudden, we don't want ramen noodles anymore, mm -hmm. and that's what it feels like dealing with the spirit of inequity. It simply feels like. I don't want ramen noodles no more. I want something else, mm -hmm. you know, whether you can have it or whether you can't have it. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, if you have some power, you can jump up and go get it, mm -hmm. you know. But if you don't have power, you will sit there and you'll just wish you had it and, you know, Complain. long for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, covet after it or whatever. Mm -hmm. All right, but let's go on. Number six. 
Whosoever therefore shall depart from all evil desires shall live unto God, but they that are subject unto them shall die forever. For this evil lusting is deadly. Do thou therefore put on the desire of righteousness, and being armed with the fear of the Lord, resist all wicked lusting. Resist all wicked lusting. Right. And this is going to be the key to this. It's resisting. Mm -hmm. You know, and hey, people... A lot of people get disappointed when it comes to the scripture because they're waiting for all these, you know, grandeur and pomp solutions, you know, <laughs> to come in with big fireworks and, mm -hmm. you know, we're about to have this, you know, big life changing thing, you know, we're about to get it printed on a t-shirt and all it's going to say is resist. Right. Resist. Resist the devil and he shall flee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Resist <laughs> the evil desire. Resist the devil. Resist everything you don't want. That's basically what's going to be the solution to this. Uh, you know, it's, it's simple, but maybe not as easy. Right. Mm -hmm. it's, we're going to, you know, we are, I ain't going to say we're going to find out. We already know it ain't easy. Right. Mm -hmm. But it says here, whosoever therefore shall depart from all evil desires shall live unto God. Right. Now, this is a big statement in this book here, because this live unto God is actually talking about our salvation. Yeah. Talking about real salvation, mm. the salvation of our bodies, as well as our spirit going on and, you know, seeing the kingdom of heaven. But it's saying that if we can't put away these evil desires, then we're going to die. Those who are unable to put away the evil desires will not get to see the kingdom of heaven is what this verse is saying. Right. Right. To live under God is to see the kingdom of heaven. But according to what we're reading here, you know, with the scope of his study, of course, there's many things that can take us out, including selfishness. And, you know, a lot of things can take us out. But we're learning here that these evil desires can and should be added to the list. Right. For this evil lusting is deadly. But notice this part right here where it says, do thou therefore put on the desire of righteousness. All right. So it's a bit of a change. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of a different thing. It's one thing to put away evil desire. It's mm -hmm. another thing to put on righteousness. That's right. Yeah. Right. Number seven. For this fear dwelleth in good desires. And when evil coveting shall see the arm with the fear of the Lord and resisting it. It will fly far from thee and not appear before thee, but be afraid of thy armor. Resisting. Yeah. So what we're, what we're learning here and what we're going to learn is part needs to sink in. You mm -hmm. know, like I said, people, you know, expect all of this, you know, big solutions. You know, they don't expect it to simply be resisting. And so they may not develop enough motivation to spend enough time developing their resistive muscles. Mm hmm. And so they still may be subject to these evil desires that's going to kill them. Yeah, you know, one of the um, the virgins, the virtues that we're told when we first started reading, I think verse number one, about how to put on the virtues garments, one of the virtues is self-control. So we have to be able to control our own self to be able to um, resist it. And it seems like the father put the ball in your own court. You're going to have to do the resisting in order to get rid of these evil desires. And notice that part right here where it says, for this fear dwelleth in good desires. So what we got to understand here is simply having the want to, to do the good desire is going to give us what it says here, fear necessary to resist the evil one. And it's talking about the fear of the Lord, right? The fear of the Lord or fear of good desires. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, even people you could imagine around the world who don't know the Lord. There's a person around the world who doesn't know the Lord. He's never read the scripture, but he likes doing good things. And when he sees something evil, the fact that he likes doing good things on, on a regular basis, when he sees an evil thing, we're going to read here, it's going to be appalling to him. It's gonna, he's not going to like it. It's going to be something he's going to want away from him because he's he wants to do good. Right. And the opposite is true too. I'm, I know I'm starting to add on to what the scripture says here, but the opposite is true too, I believe. The person who has a bad heart, who wants the evil desire, when the opportunity of righteous desire comes upon, that's going to be appalling. It's going to be disturbing to him. Mm -hmm. And that's not completely made up. It's kind of what we read about over in Sirach, mm -hmm. where it says that righteousness is an abomination mm -hmm. to these people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I forgot exactly what it says, but it says, you know, they want nothing to do with righteousness. Well, the opposite is true, too. Those who 
desire righteousness want nothing to do with evil desire right mm -hmm. it says when this evil coveting right that implies that it's kind of a spirit spirit of coveting mm -hmm. when this even i believe there's a spirit of coveting and and i don't know if this is going to make the video but i'm gonna say it you know anyway i i, I believed in the spirit of coveting even before i really believed in spirits okay because back when I had a lot of spending power, mm -hmm. you know, we were going through periods when I would try to save money and try to do. And the thing about it we was very successful in this one period where we had gotten our bills way down and even started saving money. And then all of a sudden we in our personal finances made a change and started buying a vehicle and doing some other stuff. Mm -hmm. But then when I was paying attention to the financial news. I wasn't the only one. Mm -hmm. It was like a whole bunch of people around the world had done the same thing where they had made a shift from being what they would consider bear market people. Mm -hmm. And we all, for some reason, made a shift to becoming bull market people. And it's like a spirit came on. And I, the only thing I could come up with, there was a spirit that came over the world mm. that made us, how else could you do it? Unless we all watching the news, right? you know, and, and, and I thought about that too, but we don't all have, you know, CNN and mm -hmm. get to watch the same news program. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe we do. But anyway, let's go on. And thou shalt have the victory and be crowned for it and shall attain to that desire, which is good and shall give the victory, which thou hast obtained unto God. And shall serve him in doing what thou thou self wouldest do. Now you know what I'm just saying this for the first time, but that other you know that verse that audio book of the Shepherd of Hermans that you know sounds really good, and we keep talking about how corrupt it is. Mm -hmm. It says because I listened to it. It says to give credit unto this. It don't say give credit unto God. It said give credit unto this. Really? Yeah, I was fully, because I listened to it in preparation for this class, and I was mm -hmm. fully ready to give a spiel on how it was saying give credit unto this, as if it was saying give credit unto this book, or mm. this chapter, saying, okay, we are now going to put away evil desire, we learn to put away evil desire, we're going to learn how to put on righteousness, and then after we've done this, we because it makes it seem like there's a process here. Mm -hmm. So after we've put on this this righteousness, and somebody says, "Oh, look at you! You you you've changed." Mm -hmm. We are supposed to say, "Hey, well, I got this from the Shepherd of Hermes." Right. That's what I implied from hearing the audio book. Mm. But now that I'm looking at this, you know, uh, it's a little I don't know. Yeah, I mean, because it goes from giving credit to a book, maybe even the author. Opposed or the, to give, the angel of righteousness. Right. That's true. The angel of righteousness as opposed to giving credit to the most high. But which one is it? Uh, the, 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 actually, we are supposed to give credit to the angel of righteousness. He is the one who has the responsibility for our righteousness, period. Yeah, I agree. But it just seems to make sense because we're actually not, I guess, supposed to worship I guess we can praise them, but we're not supposed to worship. Yeah, and the we're angel. yeah, right. And neither one are, are are we asked to do in the scripture, you know. Mm -hmm. But what it does tell us in this book, and I probably need to reference the verse, but it t it tells us to make sure that when we teach this, that we teach that the angel of righteousness has the sole responsibility of our repentance. If he does not lead us to repentance, we don't go to repentance. He, he's it. I oh, mean, I believe that. he has that job just like you know other angels have other. Like Raphael has healing. the angel of healing. Mm -hmm. You know, when our father decides he's going to heal somebody, he don't come down here himself and do this. <laughs> you know, I understand he's responsible for multi universes. Mm -hmm. You know, as far as we know, it could be you know multi multi universe. Like mm -hmm. we don't even know. So he doesn't have to personally. Right. Come all the way down here to worry about this bump on my water name. Mm -hmm. Right. But he does have a Raphael on each one of these worlds mm -hmm. who is able to do just that. And so that's how he operates. Well, that's how he operates also with repentance. He has this angel who I believe is Uriel. We can check. Phenel could be, but Uriel is this angel of repentance. And he has the responsibility of Leading us, giving us the desire 
we learn in this book. He has to give us the desire for repentance. If he doesn't put repentance on our heart, repentance will never even come to mind. We won't even think about it. And, and it tells us, and I'm going to go on. But what it tells us, the reason why he does that is because he knows that our repentance is asparagus. And I must look that word up. But it says that our repentance is fake or wishy-washy. Sure, we're going to repent today, but tomorrow we're going to change our mind and we're going to go back to doing the same old thing. And he knows our hearts. And so he don't even put us on repentance path. He don't even put us on a path to it, knowing that we're going to jump off of it as soon as it's convenient for us. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And so this guy is very important, mm -hmm. extremely important, mm -hmm. you know, and, and we're, we're told to bring that out. And I think I just did. So let's go. On. Okay. Number nine. For thou shalt serve good desires and be subject to them. Then thou shalt be able to get the dominion over the wicked lusting. And they will be subject to thee as thou wilt. So we're understanding what we do here. We resist the evil desire. Mm -hmm. And then we take on the good des desire. Mm -hmm. Right? And then we start to take on this righteousness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was just thinking about that the other day. How I've always had problems with my thoughts. You know, always um, wrestled with them. And so I just started saying, um, okay, when an evil desire or evil thought come to mind... To just replace it, hmm. resist it, hmm. and replace it, hmm. and it actually it actually works. Oh, okay, you know it actually works. You have, like it says, you have dominion over the wicked desires, over the wicked lusting, or whatever wicked or evil, even unrighteous that you might be thinking. Okay, so you you see something that you know you ain't supposed to touch or even look at. Mm -hmm. Or and when you're thinking about it, right. and you're saying you have all you have to do is just think about something else, or to resist those things, just as it says to resist thinking right. about it. You yeah. know, I'm not even if you have to, you know, speak to your own self. Yeah. I'm not gonna think about this. You know, I know that this is an evil spirit. This is an evil desire that's trying to come into my thoughts or whatever actions that you're taking to resist it, however way that might be, and you know, to start like it says serving good. Start thinking about good. Um, start having good desires. And, um, well, it says that you should have dominion over them. Well, I would just add this. That sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, at least, you know, for myself, I'm sure it's for other people, is the only way I'm able to stop some of these evil desires is to flat out tell our Father in Heaven, hallowed be His name, to make them stop. Mm -hmm. They, I mean, I... I I've tried to think about other stuff. I've tried to flood my mind with with, with music or whatever, mm -hmm. or good or whatever. And no, you're going to have to take this one. It's, it's above me. Mm -hmm. And I believe this falls under the, what we're learning here, that this is really all we have to do is seek the good and the bad to go away. Mm -hmm. You know, and sometimes we can do it on our own. Right. Absolutely you know, right. You mm -hmm. know, we can stop thinking about pizza and start thinking about salad, mm -hmm. you know, and then sometimes we need help. Right. Because, you know, there are spiritual things going on and yeah. strongholds that, you know, we just can't, we can't do yeah. by ourselves. That's a deep thought there that, you know, like I said, you know, the pizza and the salad, that may not be spiritual warfare. It could. Mm -hmm. But maybe it ain't. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's Snickers or the apple. You know, it's it, it's probably not spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it is. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we go straight to the top. Yeah. Like you said, we don't pray to the angels or mm -hmm. anything like that. We go straight to our father and he will dispatch who he wills out to take care of what he will, you know, to help us. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah, so, that's true. And so that's what we're learning here is that. And, you know, I realize I'm repeating it because it's, it's going to be on the test. It's going to be on the test that we have to resist these evil desires first. And then we put on the good desire. We want the good thing. Mm -hmm. Right. So let me just make up one. We're in the Walmart walking around. And what you say that lady? She was in her club clothes. Mm -hmm. So there go the lady in in the club clothes that you know out out your eyeballs in the in the left. So when you turn <laughs> to the left, there she is in her club clothes to the left. And before you allow that evil thought to manifest to to grow, because mm -hmm. the seed gonna plant, the seed gonna pop. As soon as your eyeball turn around, the seed gonna be. But what do you allow the seed to do? Mm -hmm. You know, do you cultivate it? Do you water it? Do you sit there and you know what I'm saying? You walking behind the lady. I need some apples too. Let me go in this direction over here too. <laughs> you know, if you add fertilizer to this seed, or do you you know 
immediately dehydrate the seed as you turn around and say, where's my wife? You know what I mean? And you go, you know, find out, you know, remind yourself what kind of clothes she got on and you put that evil desire out of your head. Right. But right. sometimes it takes more than that. Yeah, especially when she's super cute. <laughs> or if she's picking on you or something weird, you know what I'm saying? Or you she's have to back deal or if you have to deal with her. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She what if what if you're in a hospital and she's your nurse or something? You like constantly pushing the button like, uh, can I have some more juice? <laughs> and she's super friendly. <laughs> Here, let me help you with that. No, yeah, you know, so you have you, you spiritual warfare. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, and so you have to get on a spiritual level and start praying about these things and not try to deal with them on our own, especially when we realize that we can't. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Somebody else is above us. Yeah, that's true. But let's go on. And I said, sir, I would know how to serve that desire which is good. Hearken, said he, fear God and put thy trust in him and love truth and righteousness and do that which is good. Now here's a lot now. It doesn't sound like a lot, but here's a lot. He's telling him, okay, what do you have to do in order to serve that desire which is good? Right. Okay, so first thing he says is fear God. Mm-hmm. That means keeping the commandments. Right. If I don't know how people think they have the fear of the Lord when they will break his commandments. His laws. His laws, his rules. Mm-hmm. I mean, do you fear your parent if you don't keep their <laughs> rules? Nope. No, you don't. I mean, I told you to have this place cleaned up when I came back. And when I come back, you know, you lay with your feet up on your cell phone. And I say, why ain't it cleaned up? And, you know, yeah, that ain't fear. No. Not at all. You got to keep the commandments is what they're saying. And it says and put thy trust in him Mm -hmm. so you have to put faith in him Mm -hmm. you know and our faith is constantly tested you know always and so and so we have to have faith in him what is what does revelation say it says that the fearful the scared are not gonna Mm -hmm. make it into the kingdom Mm -hmm. so if you're not trusting in him during this time of garrison during this time of peace Mm -hmm. what's going to happen when the apocalypse comes and you know you have meteor shot you know meteors coming out of the sky you're going to put your trust in man or put your trust in your feet or put your trust in your money or put Mm -hmm. your trust in something else because like i said during this time of garrison we didn't put it our trust in him when it came time to buying a car or when it came time to making a video when it came time to whatever Mm -hmm. we didn't put our faith and trust in him then right and so when the ship hit the sand you know some of us going to drown right the next one says to love truth that's the scripture right so you know truth above all you know because you remember that we are dealing with spiritual warfare mm-hmm. right and here's the spirit of inequity mm-hmm. but in our last videos we was talking about the seven spirits of mary magdalene the jezebel spirit mm-hmm. that we know or call it and it starts with deception right yeah you always talks about talk about how you love truth you absolutely have to love truth because well for a person like me that's Really, all I have to stand on mm-hmm. is truth. You know, my whole world falls apart without truth. Right. You know, but what we were talking about was deception leading the way when it comes to the Jezebel spirit. Mm-hmm. And so if you love truth, she has no room. Yeah, it's Espe- number one. Number one. When you lo- so when you love truth, you are her number one enemy. Mm-hmm. You're the number one enemy to the number one demon. And so you don't have to deal with that spirit, the spirit of Jezebel. Or you don't have to deal with those seven spirits of you know Mary Magdalene you know we don't have to deal with those at all if we can love truth right you know and righteousness and that which is good and you have to think about it a moment why would this be in here because it seems a little repetitive or redundant while up there it says to fear the Lord now it's talking about righteousness Mm -hmm. but no these are acts Mm -hmm. you know this is this requires action Mm -hmm. you know so so it's taking what we got up here and putting it into action right and to do that which is good Mm -hmm. that's big too yeah you know because this too requires action and i covered in another uh video series on charity Mm -hmm. we got a lot of videos on how that activates the elijah spirit Mm -hmm. so you know we don't can't be like you know thinking you know trying to make up stuff yeah I, i do good here i do good that no we actually physically have to want to go out and do a good deed if we gotta make up something Right. You know, go grab some water and go down to the block and just pass them out, you know. Yeah, and that Elijah spirit is what's going to help you um, in accomplishing these things, you know, even if you're having a hard time with it. Yeah, and mm, as 
his responsibility. You had to remember who the Elijah was in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. You know, his responsibility was going up against Jezebel and King right. Ahab and getting them rid of the deception, the idolatry, mm -hmm. the wickedness, the, the witchcraft and all the rebellion that was going on. Well, in these end times, you will have the reincarnation of the Elijah spirit. Mm -hmm. Remember, he always comes before our Messiah. Well, you will also have the reincarnation of these Jezebel spirits too. And just like you have many, many, 144,000 of these Elijah spirits running around, mm -hmm. you're going to have at least these many of these Jezebel spirits and these Ahab spirits running around. Right. So you have all of this work to do, or he has all of this work to do. Mm -hmm. You know, praise the Father, the battle is not ours. And so, like you said, that's a big deal to do these good works. Mm -hmm. You know, it's necessary to activate this Elijah spirit actually doing good deeds. Right. Right. So let's go on. Number 10. If thou should do these things, thou should be an approved servant of God and serve him. And all others who shall in like manner serve a good desire shall live unto God. So simple as that. If you, we will do this. Like I always say, the if is the most important mm -hmm. word in the Bible. Mm -hmm. If we will simply resist the evil mm -hmm. and desire the good. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the other things it says up there, you know, uh, fear, fear God, put thy trust in him, love, truth and righteousness and do that which is good. If we do these things. We shall be an approved servant of God. So we could tell you this video how to become a servant of God. Mm, yeah. It's what we got to do. Put away the evil and take on the good. Simple as that. That's why I'm trying to stress this. I mean, we can go into a lot of, you know, scriptural classes on, you know, the, the finer details of this. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know. Precepts at the precepts at yeah, the precepts. Yeah. Know, if we just do this. Yeah. This actually, I mean, it's kind of like what the Messiah said, where he rolled everything up. Well, this is, you know, a huge roll up, too, where he's saying all we have to do is put away the evil and desire the good. This is sort of like when they said that, the, or even is it a scripture where it says that the scripture is so simple that even a child can comprehend it? Yeah. You know, is you know, you tell your child, stop doing that and do this. Yeah. So this is sort of like what that yeah. is. And the scripture says that it's also so simple that the intelligent, the wise, mm -hmm. those people that think we're so smart in society, we marginalize it and say, you know, that's child's play that's beneath us. We don't have to go, you know, look at that book for our instruction. That's so, you know, that's so simple. Everybody knows that. Yeah, everybody knows that. <laughs> yeah. Just stop, just stop doing the evil and do good. <laughs> it's real easy. All right, let's go on. And when he had fulfilled these twelve commands, he said unto me, Thou hast now these commands, walk in them, and exhort those that hear them to repent, and that they keep their repentance pure all the remaining days of their life. So again, talking about these twelve commands, mm -hmm. right? So that's how we put away evil desire. Yeah. That's how we deal with this particular spirit, the spirit of inequity, mm -hmm. no doubt, to mm -hmm. resist them. Yeah. You know, find out who he is, what he likes. We can look back at him over here. And when we recognize his traits in us, when we see our, ourselves wanting these particular things, we know that we're dealing with the spirit of inequity mm -hmm. and we simply resist him. Mm -hmm. and try to take on good desires so maybe we just go do something good mm -hmm. right go physically do something good amongst the other things yeah mm -hmm. well you guys let us know what you think down in the comment section we'll love to hear anything you have to add to this and we'll see you in the comments Shalawama. Shalawama.